I must describe the extraordinary event which I call my fatality. On August the 2nd, 1946, I began to feel fierce pains throughout my body, particularly in the chest and around the heart. After trying for half an hour to find a doctor, a friend sent Dr. Lloyd Jones, our present house doctor, who then saved my life. He gave me an injection to reduce the pains. This immediately helped. But 10 minutes later, I lost consciousness and my heartbeat and pulse stopped. In other words, I was practically dead. I have never found out how long it lasted. All I was told was that Dr. Jones made an injection directly into my heart. It was three weeks before I recovered. I seldom have severe attacks, but my shortness of breath is more or less chronic. I only feel free of it for four or five hours a day. And almost every night I wake up short of breath. For some months now I have not dared to sleep in my bed but in a chair. I suffer from exhaustion and dizziness, and my eyes, which used to be exceptionally good, make it hard for me to read. I do not attach so much importance to being a musical bogeyman as to being a natural continuer of properly understood good old tradition. What I do believe in, however, is the new. I believe it to be the good and the beautiful toward which all the endeavours of our inmost being are directed as involuntarily and irresistibly as they are toward the future. Somewhere in our future there must be a splendid fulfilment, as yet hidden from us, for that is the constant hope behind all our endeavours. Perhaps this future is a higher evolutionary stage for our species, one where our longing, which today denies us peace, will find satisfaction. Perhaps it is simply death, but perhaps it is also the certainty of a higher life after death. The future brings the new 
And perhaps for that reason we so often and so rightly find the new identical with the beautiful and the good. Arnold Schoenberg died at 11.45 p.m. on the 13th of July, 1951. His last word was harmony. And this is what some people said about him at the end of his life. I believe that there's little probability that the 12-note scale will ever produce anything more than morbid or entirely cerebral growths. It might deal successfully with neuroses of various kinds, but I can't imagine it associated with any healthy and happy concept, such as young love or the coming of spring. Sir Arnold Bax, a composer. It is easy to see that Schoenberg sins against something older and more fundamental than 19th century textbooks. He sins against the natural physical laws governing sound, a sort of arbitrary mathematics is substituted for elementary acoustical laws. The result of such a tonal cuisine is mostly unpalatable. Felix Abrahamian, a critic. And from Moscow? The stillborn theories of Schoenberg, calculated to destroy melody and harmony, can lead only to regression, not to progress in art. They serve as a convenient springboard for propaganda of anti-democratic cosmopolitanism supporting the principles of imperialist aesthetics. G. Schneerson in Music in the Service of Reaction. How many unsuccessful exhumations are required before works are pronounced dead? Ivor Keyes, an academic. We're now in a storeroom in the California State University, which temporarily houses the papers, the musical sketches, the models, and some paintings which Schoenberg left behind at the time of his death. In these boxes are 12-tone rows, little musical ideas of various kinds which came together to make the 50-odd pieces which remain of his principal musical composition. When we come to judge Schoenberg, or when the years come to judge Schoenberg, it will be not only because of his enormous intellectual qualities and because of his high intelligence and the superabundant richness of his invention, it will be rather possibly for a moral quality or something which could be defined like a moral quality. Beethoven described it by asking the question, muss es sein, es muss sein, must it be, it must be, and many of Schoenberg's texts contain echoes of a similar sense of moral purpose. And I think, for me, this exploration of Schoenberg's work has shown precisely that, that there have been paradoxes, apparent contradictions and complexities of all kinds. But through it all shines the central determination 
and certainty, a kind of certainty others of us must envy, that what he was doing was what he had to do and was right for him. And I'm sure that uh, there are many ingredients to great music, but that is an essential one without which music cannot survive and remain and be judged to be great. All I have endeavored to accomplish during these 15 years is now evaluated as an achievement, seems in some respect to be an overestimation. Personally, I have the feeling as if I had fallen into an ocean of boiling water and not knowing how to swim, what to get out in another manner, I have tried with my legs and arms as best as I could. I do not know what saved me, why I was not drowned or cooked alive. I have perhaps only one merit. I never gave up. But how could I give up in the middle of an ocean? There was nobody to help me, nor were there many who would not have liked to see me succumb. It might have been the desire to get rid of this nightmare, of this unharmonious torture, of these unintelligible ideas, of this methodical madness. Maybe I didn't care enough about such problems. Maybe I myself failed to understand their viewpoint. Was not considerate enough. Was rough when I should have been thought. But I have one excuse. I had fallen into an ocean, into an ocean of overheated water, and it burned not only my skin, it burned also internally. And I could not swim. At least I could not swim with the tide. All I could do was to swim against the tide. Whether it saved me or not, I see that I was always in the rain. And when you call it an achievement, so forgive me. I do not understand of what it might consist. That I never gave up. I could not. I would have liked to. Please do not call it false modesty, if I say. Maybe something has been achieved, but it was not I who deserves the credit for that. The credit must be given to my opponents. They were the ones who really helped me. Thank you. 